We're live. I think we're live. What's up, family? See what's doing in here. Looks like there are nine of you here so far. Hello. Uh, this was a bit of a last minute decision to even do this live today. So I hope that you guys can hear me and stuff. Uh, I just got back from Amsterdam like three days ago. What's it's, it's Tuesday. I got back Friday. So I'm just getting home. I can't see if anyone is in the chat room. Like I can see the chat room, but I can't see like if there are any participants. I don't know what's going on, but I see more people are joining. I don't know why I'm not seeing the chat. This is very odd. I'm hoping that this is working correctly and that I'm not going to have to end this and then start over. Let me see if I can open another window because otherwise it's just going to be me like talking to myself. <laughs> it's going to be me like talking. Okay. So I opened it in my other account and I can see you guys chatting here. So I guess what I'll do is rather than start a whole new stream, I will try to just read your comments in my other window. This is gonna be slightly awkward because like my little control window where I can actually control the stream is gonna be separate, but whatever. Okay, so hey Vern, Chantrice, Katia, Tasha, Maureen, Lyrena, Pimensa. Oh, all the usuals, natural butterflies, Shelly. Hi everybody, hi, hi, hi. Yeah, something weird is going on, Shelly, with this stream, but I'm just glad that you guys can see me. There might be a little bit of weirdness because I'm now in my civilian YouTube account in an incognito window just to see the chat. So I'm seeing myself on a delay <laughs> that you guys are seeing. So it's weird. As long as you guys can see me and hear me, that's all that matters. So what's up, guys? As I was saying a moment ago, I just got back into town. I was in Amsterdam for about 10 days. And shout out to my subscriber, by the way. I'm not going to say your name in case you don't want me to say your name, but she slid into them DMs uh, on my Instagram and gave me a actual fuck ton of recommendations of places to eat and all sorts of stuff while I was in Amsterdam. I didn't get to do everything because there was literally just too much for me to get to while I was there. But it was really, really helpful because, you know, when you're in a strange land with you know, no real compass of where you're going to go and stuff. I mean, I had a vague idea of things I wanted to do. It was really nice to be like, okay, here's where I can get some good food and stuff like that. Hey, Amber. Okay. So, um, yeah. So thank you again to my beautiful subscriber slash Instagram follower. Cause that was how we were communicating. I never even normally check my DMs on Instagram because for the most part, it's just creepy guys. But I've been trying to be better about that because I've noticed sometimes it is just y'all asking me questions or, or just sending me messages otherwise. So I'm trying to be better about checking my DMs on Instagram because I never really used to. Um, and I'm glad that I have started doing that because I wouldn't have gotten all that, that super in-depth lengthy uh, email from, from one of you guys. What else? I've got some notes here just so I make sure I talk about everything. And I do want to talk about our Protect Your Ends Challenge because that's sort of the main piece I wanted to talk about with you guys today. Oh, and because I was away, I was overseas, the last couple of videos you saw were obviously pre-taped, like my confidence video and then the one before that. But uh, that also means that I've been behind on comments. I was just sitting here and going through and at least trying to heart things, but... but for anyone who commented on my last couple of videos or just any video in the last couple of weeks, I love you and appreciate you unless you're a troll and an asshole, in which case you've already been blocked. But uh, I won't be able to kind of respond with an actual message because it's just too much. There's just too many comments for me to actually be able to respond one by one like I normally like to. Uh, so I hope just my little heart saying thank you for the comment will do for now. And that should do it for all the sort of housekeeping stuff, I think. Um, yeah, so let's see. Thanks, Vern. Yeah, this is a head wrap from Fumjum. And I've linked the website in the description box, but this particular one is no longer available because I've had it quite a while. So sorry, that's, that's life. 
Oh, now that you're going to Amsterdam in May, you're going to have much nicer weather than me. I, it rained on us pretty much the entire time. I mean, not every single day, but it's been raining a ton here in LA. And I think I just brought the rain with me because it was raining in Amsterdam a ton. Uh, thank you, Mishaya. I'm glad I made it back safe too, because even though I travel not a ton, but maybe more than average, I still get nervous about it because you just never know. Thank you, Geraldine. Ray is on the couch. You can't see her, but she's right over my shoulder. She's on the couch. I have a little heating pad there that she likes to lie down on because it is, it's pretty chilly in LA right now. I think people think LA is always 70 and sunny, but that's only 95% of the time, you guys. It can get into the 40s around this time of year. So it's, it's pretty chilly today. Nina, you know, I use scarves all the time for head wraps. I just wanted to put on like a nicer one because I knew I was going to see you guys. And I also was recording a video earlier, which you guys will see in a couple of days. Shelly, I did have a great time in Amsterdam. It was really fun. I did bring my camera with me, my, my camera that I use to make the videos I make, which are not vlogs. I don't know what they are, but they're not vlogs. Um, and unlike with my previous trip to New Orleans, I actually did turn it on and film stuff. So if I feel like I can put it together in a way that is cohesive, I will put it up. But if I'm not happy with it, it feels too disjointed. I may just scrap it. I don't know, but I do have a fair amount of footage from my time in Amsterdam. Uh, what am I sipping on? This is a hot toddy because it's officially five o'clock. Not to mention it is quite chilly in here. I don't have my heat on because I'm cheap. <laughs> and that's also why Riri is on the heating pad because I don't know, I like to avoid using the heat unless I actually really need it. If I can warm up with a nice warm drink or just putting on another layer, I'll just do that. It is LA after all, it doesn't get that cold. Ayana, you have a hot toddy too? <laughs> Yeah, you know, a lot, a lot of people don't know what, what a hot toddy is, but because internally and spiritually, I'm an 85-year-old man, it is my favorite drink. Yeah, D. Walker, let's get into the, the challenge, actually, the, the Protect Your Ends Challenge, because I only want to hop on for like half an hour. I don't want to waste a whole bunch of you guys' time tonight, but I don't remember exactly how far in we are, but we're at least a month in, I think, to the PYE Challenge. It's going great for me so far. It's been pretty simple because that's more or less how I look after my hair most of the time. The only thing that's been a bit of a challenge is the no direct heat rule because you guys, a lot of you guys know, not maybe not all of you, but I have that thermal brush that I've been using that's just made it so nice to get my hair heat stretched and much more easy to style afterward. And not having that, I've had to go back to my roots, <laughs> go back to uh, my methods of how I managed to grow my hair to my waist in the first place. And I didn't use direct heat on my hair for six, seven years or something straight. Um, so it's not like I'm a stranger to it, but having that crutch, it's been like, wow, this is so much easier to deal with. <laughs> and it's been a good thing for me to break that habit because too much heat is obviously not good for your hair. One of the main reasons I did that big cut in January of last year and then another big cut, probably, well, we'll see, because I did film it, but a few more inches in November at the end of 2018 was just uh, tapering of my ends. And heat obviously isn't going to help with that going forward. So I don't want to get into a routine of heat stretching my hair every single month and then just creating the same problem all over again through a different means. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Aquarian GYR L5, all of my makeup details are already in the description box of this video. Giovanna, are, am I growing my hair to long lengths again? I keep going back and forth about that because I was looking at, you know what it was? I was looking up my original um, pre-poo detangler recipe video because I needed a clip of it or, or something. I can't remember. I needed to find something in that video. And I was looking at the clip of me detangling my hair. And I remember when I, when that was my hair length, I didn't feel like my hair was that long, but when I was watching, I was just like, damn, my hair was pretty lengthy there. And I was a little wistful about it on one hand, like, well, I really did that. I really grew my hair the longest it had ever been in my life. And on the other hand, I don't miss dealing with that. 
in the past year, since I've had a full year since I cut off that nine, 10 inches, whatever it was, I have enjoyed looking after my hair so much more. And I don't know if that's because getting rid of those weathered, battered ends just made it so much easier or the length, just having less length to deal with made it easier or both. So I think I'm curious to see if I'm able to grow my hair to that point again, keeping my ends in good shape as we go with continuous trimming and just better methods and so forth. If I'm able to maintain the ease of my hair care the way it is now while having those inches back. And if not, then I might just keep it shorter because I don't want to be in that stage where I'm just dreading every wash day and dreading every detangling session like I used to because it takes too much time. It's not like my hair care is super easy now, but it's super easy to me. The fact that I can detangle my hair pretty quickly and wash day doesn't take all damn day anymore. That really has changed things for me. And I kind of want to keep it that way. And if I can keep it that way while growing my hair back to my belly button, then I'd be happy to do so. Michelle, there is not a favorite way that I wear my head wraps, but I uh, don't, I'm not terribly good at tying them. I get questions a lot about how I tie my head wraps. If I had to recreate this for you guys on camera, I, I wouldn't be able to do it. I just kind of tie and tuck and futz with it until I feel like it looks okay and I feel like it's not gonna go flopping around and that's it. There is a much quicker way that I tend to tie them, which doesn't really work with a scarf like this, to be honest. It has to be um, a looser material, much softer. And that's kind of my go-to super quick head wrap way. So I guess I could show you guys that sometime. It's super easy. Really, I just take the scarf, uh, tie it in front once, and then with the little piece that's sort of in the opening around my head, I take the ends and I just stuff it in there, and that's it. Like That is literally all I do. Um, yeah. Oh, thank you, Selena. Oh, you got Pimenta, you got an $18 wig off Amazon and you're <laughs> Amazon is uh coming up on the wig on the wig game, I think, because I got a lavender wig off of there. It wasn't cheap though. I feel like it was more in the like the $30 to $40 range, but uh, I wore it in one of my videos already. So if you um want to see it, I don't remember which one it was, but it was only a couple videos ago, and maybe you'll see it on the thumbnail. I don't really remember. Um Anyway, the lace on it was really soft. I was actually impressed with the quality. It felt like a nice version of a synthetic lace front rather than a beauty supply store version of a synthetic lace front. Vern, I've never made a quick wig. Mariela, your coworkers never know if you wear wigs. Yeah, I wear wigs on camera much more than I do in real life. I think. I wear them in real life here and there, but I'm much more likely to either rock a phony pony or a turban or a head wrap before a wig. I don't know what it is, but I love them for on camera, but I almost just can't be bothered with them for real life. Just trying to get them to be undetectable, which I can't even do. I try to get them as close to undetectable as possible. I don't know how successful I am, so yeah. Giovanna, am I going my hair to real long lengths? I actually just talked about that. So if you want to DVR it and back up maybe three minutes, you will see my answer to that. Um, Lydia, I'm with you. Head wraps. I mean, I've just got some Pusha T braids under this head wrap right now because I was just coming off a wash day and it's my same braids that I put in after I finished wash day. And it's just easy for me. That was part of my routine for so many years until relatively recently, you know, I would have my wash day, I would stretch my hair and braids or twists, rock a head wrap until they dry for the next day or two. And then after that, put my braids or twists into a bun, maybe put my phony pony puff on top of that for the rest of the week. And that was it. The passion twist video was that the wig. I think so. The the nightmare takedown one. So yeah, the thumbnail of that video would be me actually taking the twist down, so you wouldn't see it. That's why I couldn't remember. Actually, I think it is that video. Yes. Good for you, Aisha. What was your workout? 
Oh, Marielle, I didn't realize you were in Toronto. I want to go to Toronto. I want to go to Canada, period, pretty badly. But I don't know if I want to go West Coast or East Coast because I want to check out Vancouver as well. Yeah, Chantrice, I think phony ponytails are maybe the most underrated, you know, if you're going to wear magic hair, if you're going to wear weave of some sort, I feel like phony ponytails are maybe the most underrated option because it's already good to have your hair up and tucked away in a bun to begin with. That's already a protective style. And then you can actually protect your hair even more by just kind of like covering it up by putting that phony pony on top. It's perfect. Giovanna, I don't drink nearly as much water as I should, but thank you for saying that I have a beautiful complexion. Vancouver over Toronto, huh, Marielle? Because you tend to hear more about Toronto for some reason rather than Vancouver, but I want to check out both. Uh, Nina, I just talked about that. I've been stretching with just braids and twists. Same old, same old. Yeah, phony ponies are the best, Geraldine. I love them. Oh no, Tia, did you damage your hair? I mean, you're welcome to do whatever you like. You, if you wanted to bleach, bleach and press your hair, you're. I mean, that's life. You know, a challenge is just. I don't know. It's a way to keep yourself accountable in a group setting. But if that's not what you feel like you want to do, then that's cool. Hey, Tyara. <laughs> so everyone else is, I mean, I think for me, I'm probably going to be rocking just push a T braids and twist for a little while, but I think I'm going to go into another long-term protective style fairly soon, just because it's easier for my lifestyle to not have to worry about rejudging my head wrap every day or anything like that, trying to make myself look cute, but I'm definitely not going to be doing passion twists. Okay. And uh, I'll probably do a style that I've done before and that I know works for me, like boho locks or something like that. How long will the challenge be? Girl, I do not remember the exact dates off the top of my head. I should have had that in front of me, but I do have the video with all the rules linked in the description box underneath this video right now. So you can pop over to that and just click show more and you'll see all the challenge dates and rules and stuff. Melanin D beauty, you're doing spring twist. Spring twist seem to be having a moment. I think because people are using the term spring twist and passion twist interchangeably, they're not the same, but I really want to try spring twist because I have the hair already. I've had it for years as a matter of fact, and I just never got around to trying it. But passion twist use that free trust water wave hair, which my hair clearly did not like. Um, and I don't want to revisit that style, but I will, I will try spring twists at some point. Oh, Michelle, you're wearing boho locks right now. I love boho locks. They are expensive, but in my opinion, they're worth it because I don't feel like I've seen any other faux lock that really looks like them. And every time I wear them, I get so many compliments. I love the way they look. I especially like the shorter length. I'm so glad she came out with the bob length because I feel like I'm a convert. Like, I don't know if I'll even go back to the long. I mean, I probably will. Let's be, let's be real. I probably will go back to the long ones at some point, but I really, really love the short ones. Ms. Evie Styles, you want to try a phony pony that's not a lot of money and looks like quality. I think there's a ton of options. Try a local beauty supply store to start because then you can actually see them and feel them. But yeah, I mean, I don't, find that phony ponytails are expensive anyway. They're usually sometimes under $10, but usually not more than 15. Natasha, spring twists, I don't know what you mean yank while twisting, but with passion twists, uh, you do have to do this pull-up method. Now for me, I didn't do the pull-up until after I was past my hair within each twist, because it just seems like you're asking for mechanical damage, quite frankly. However, despite not doing that pulling up where you're essentially yanking it, which I think is what you're talking about, I still had insane tangling and webbing and meshing of that, uh, that fake hair with my real hair. It just didn't work out for me at all.
Is that a raccoon on my head? Uh, that would be a head wrap. Is that you trying to get blocked from this chat? Let's see. Uh, yeah, Natasha, I agree. Marley twists, no problems. And it's so interesting. Under my passion twist takedown video, a lot of people are getting all up in their feelings and taking it personally that I had a bad experience and talking to me like I'm a fucking idiot. Like, why didn't you add conditioner? Because I know my hair and I know that that would have made things worse because it would have caused my hair to shrink, allowing the synthetic hair to essentially strangle my real hair. And it would have made the takedown even more difficult. Um, there was also the... Um, what was the other thing people kept saying? Oh, I should have cut the bottoms, but that wouldn't have saved me a significant amount of time because my hair, from where the actual twisting stop, because the bottom three to four inches is loose hair anyway, but from where the twisting stop in each twitch, twist, it's probably three inches maximum of, of fake hair. So maybe the bottom six to seven inches total were all fake hair, only three of which of those inches were twisted. So that wouldn't have saved me much time. I was able to rip through that quickly and that wouldn't have stopped me from dealing with all the tangles that were with my real hair in there. But for whatever reason, people have a big problem with me having a bad experience, even though it didn't even happen to them. Yeah, it's, it's a whole thing with these passion twists, girl. <laughs> Taylor, a short hair girls can't relate. I don't even feel like my hair is long anymore. I mean, I cut so much of it off, but yeah, I mean, it it was there. It was unavoidable that I would have, I don't know, something like seventy five percent, eighty percent of the length of those twists. I had to unravel without cutting. So, cutting the bottoms. I mean, I just ripped through that. That's not what made it take two hours for me to take that hair out. Yeah, Natasha, you're right. Um, the the pulling apart, I, I feel like I, I, I had a lot of breakage during that takedown process and I've continued to have breakage. Honestly, I think the passion twists were a setback for me and you'll hear more, you'll hear a bit more about that in my video coming out in a couple days, the one I just filmed today. But, you know, life goes on, hair regrows, thankfully. I'm healthy, I can grow more hair. It's gonna be okay. Your twist lasted nine days before you had to see your girl. <laughs> uh, oh, Tyara, you have a wash day this weekend? Yeah, I just had mine. It felt so good. I think partially because I'd been away and whenever I'm away, I can't really do my normal moisturizing sessions because I only bring so much stuff with me. I usually bring like one leave-in and an oil and that's it. And then I just make do. So it was really nice to just give my hair a proper spa day this weekend. I was really happy about it. And I, again, like going back to what I was saying earlier, because since cutting off all of that problematic hair at the beginning of last year and a little bit more at the end of last year, my hair has just been so much more cooperative and enjoyable to deal with. So I really did enjoy my wash day, which is something I never thought would be the case, which is weird because I still kind of get that a little bit of anxiety, like, oh God, I'm going to have a lot of tangles. Like the night before when I'm putting in my pre-poo, I'm just like, oh God, is this going to be like an eight hour detangling session tomorrow? <laughs> But it was good. I was able to detangle my hair pretty quickly. Yeah, Natasha, that's what always scared me about yarn twists and braids. That and the length of the install. Because yarn twists and braids were definitely having a moment at the beginning of my being a YouTube fan when I first discovered that people were doing videos about Afro-textured hair on YouTube. I think... Yarn twists and braids, really yarn braids, not even yarn twists, were definitely having a moment and I wanted to try them, but people would talk about having to install them over like three days, four days. It was crazy. And um, also just like how absorb absorbent, I started to say absorptive, how absorbent yarn is. That always scared me because I don't want it leaching moisture from my hair.
Yeah, Tamara, I try to protect my ends and mine stay raggedy too. <laughs> it just seems to be a never ending struggle. I think they're less raggedy than they used to be. And I have a lot of thoughts on just things that I've changed that have helped that. I'm, I'm trying to kind of keep notes on this so that I can eventually do a video, hopefully, but I also have to give this time to see if I'm right, because if two years from, from now I have the same crazy tapering that I had that made me cut my hair last year, then I won't know what I'm talking about, will I? P. Mensa, Natasha is peer pressuring you. I don't know. <laughs> Chantrice, I used to have a hair steamer. I just got one off of eBay um, back when that was also a big thing on YouTube. It eventually crept out on me and I never replaced it. And uh, I haven't really felt like I needed to. I feel like my hair does just fine with, you know, just using my hot head or something to apply heat with my deep conditioner. I, I didn't really find that steaming my hair was some life changing experience, but maybe I also just had a really crappy hair steamer because again, I got it off eBay. Oh, Tamara, you wash your hair in Swiss seat. A lot of times when I do my wash day videos, people ask me why I don't wash my hair in twists or braids, and I don't because I feel like it exacerbates tangling for me. My hair needs to be loose so I can continue to rake as I'm shampooing because if I don't, I get my hair tangles the worst as, at the roots, and that's where you're doing all that agitation with shampooing. So that's why I don't like washing my hair in twists. I like to take my sections apart. <laughs> Y'all are so funny in this chat. Estelle, um, I don't like putting cold things on my hair or scalp because it's extremely unpleasant. <laughs> I don't think I've um, done anything to curb shedding other than like black tea rinses and stuff like that. I've never tried peppermint tea. Oh my gosh, it's already 527. Well, I guess we should wrap this up because I said I didn't want to keep you guys more than half an hour. I don't want to be wasting everybody's time. But it's been really fun to chat with you guys. I feel like I miss y'all since we haven't been doing weekly streams ever since Vlogmas ended. But it's also been nice to not be hustling to try to get out seven videos a week. <laughs> Vern, you are not wasting my time. Uh, Mario, yeah, I do miss you guys. I really like our little live streams. I think it's going to be fun to continue to just do do them here and there, you know, without having to feel pressured to do them on any particular schedule. But yeah, that'll do it, I guess. So anyone who wants to know the details on the Protect Your End Style Challenge, I've already linked that video in the description box underneath this one. So you can go ahead and check that out. It'll have also all the rules written out in the description box under that video. And then I talk through them all. It was a live stream much like this one. So I talk through them all and just explain anything that might be unclear. But we've got, I think, another, uh, not quite two full months, but close to, and I'm also thinking in March, I want to do a more lifestyle health fitness type of challenge because I did my half-assed Whole30 in January, which didn't really work because I knew I was going to New Orleans and I wasn't going to be whole 30 when I was there. So it was kind of a waste. But in March, I want to do more of a challenge that's focused on self-care. And a big part of self-care is nourishing your body properly. So I'm thinking I might call it something like make it in March or make it March where a big core, uh, part of the challenge is going to be making all of your own meals at home. And my rider dies already know how big I am on cooking for yourself so that you know exactly what's in your food. I really believe that cooking is self care. It'll also help us save some money. And if you're trying to get your, you know, your summer 19 body, I'm very cynical about that. I feel like whatever body you have is your summer body, but whatever. Um, I think in addition to the making it at home aspect for all of our food in this challenge, there will be some other things that I, I'm building out as I uh, come up with the 
challenge rules, I guess. So that's going to be for March. I'll maybe I'll do another live stream or something just when I have that more figured out. So maybe, I don't know, maybe next weekend or something. But if you guys are interested uh, in anything like that, I would definitely suggest that if you have Instagram, you check me out on there. I'm, I'm, you guys know, I don't like plugging other, I don't like plugging myself at all. I don't even like asking people to subscribe. However, I am much more active on Instagram day to day because it's so much easier than being active on YouTube day to day. So I'll often share things I'm cooking, recipes I'm trying, what I'm eating, what I'm doing, if I'm going to the gym, things like that, which because I'm healing up, I will be back in the gym any day now. So yeah, if you guys are interested in that, my Instagram is also linked in the description box. So once we start our challenge in March, which I'm thinking we'll just run March 1st through 31st, it'll be a lot more easy to see what's going on day to day rather than having video check-ins, which I fine aren't terribly effective. So yeah, it's going to be make it in March or make it, I, I haven't quite figured that out yet, but yeah, it's going to be more about self-care in a more holistic way rather than being like, don't eat sugar. Although that is going to be part of it too. But that is going to do it for this one, you guys. As always, it's been lovely to talk to you. I just got to get back to my proper window so I can actually end this stream. But thanks for hanging out with me. You guys know how much you mean to me. Uh, I tend to be an unemotional person on YouTube, but the truth is I'm an extremely emotional, sensitive person. So you guys really mean a lot to me and I appreciate your friendship and just your support and spending time with me. So thanks again. And if you're interested in making it in March, just uh, be on the lookout for another live stream, I guess, because I'm thinking maybe I'll just set, set up the rules that way. And then for day to day, actually being consistent with seeing what's going on with me in terms of what I'm eating and cooking and stuff, Instagram is going to be the way to go with that. So I'll talk to you guys later and thanks for hanging out. Bye.